Hello, it's Lisa from, I don't know what this podcast is called or this vlog, whatever it is. Um, maybe the selfish knitter since all I do <laughs> is knit for myself. Although this year I am going to give a sweater to my daughter for Christmas. I don't think she watches this, but um, yeah, so that's a big deal. Um, I wanted to come in and share with you, like I always do, works in progress, finished objects, although I don't have any finished objects, I do have a work in progress I'm going to share with you, um, and thoughts about knitting, creativity, spirituality, depression, how all of those are connected, and how knitting is um, a form of, it's not a mindfulness practice, but it is mindful it has elements of mindfulness in it. And so by you can actually use knitting. People talk about how relaxing knitting is. Um, I have found it, it, could, it can be relaxing, but it can also be very stressful. Um, but you can use knitting to center and focus your mind. Um, so just, and this helps with, by centering and focusing the mind, we actually transcend the thinking mind, which is always obsessed and thinking about ourselves. And it could be just as, you know, mundane as, um, you know, how do I look? How am I feeling? How does that person perceive me? How did I do? These kinds of thoughts are always running through our minds and they cause us a lot of anxiety and cause us a lot of struggle and a lot of suffering. And the more that we can transcend that thinking mind and focus on a repetitive action like the breath or knitting stitches or um, you know chanting a name these help us to calm and focus the mind and to bring um, we, we transcend we take periods of time where we're not obsessively thinking about ourselves and this in turn helps us to be calmer, helps us to be happier, helps us to kind of, as the Buddhists might say, it helps us to connect with our um, good nature, our, our, in, our uh, inherently good nature. That's how the Buddhists put it. So this is something that I have found and I really am interested in and I do talk about this from time to time. Um, so that's, those, that's all I'm gonna say about that today. I will talk about uh, the Birkin. The Birkin is, I, I, this is the second time I'm knitting the Birkin. And the first time I knit something, it's not always so easy to have uh, insights to offer about it because you're kind of like, the, the pattern is new to you. I'm not a great pattern knitter. I have, I always use, I use Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman's percentage system and that has always worked for me. Um, but I'm now branching out into patterns and um, this pattern is so beautiful. I mean, I'll just show you, here's my, here's where I'm at. Um, these are the colors that I chose. I am using, um, this is the back of the sweater and it's the colors that I'm using. Uh, the, it's blue sky fibers. This is a beaut, they have beautiful colorways. Um, I find the yarn to be a little sticky to do color work with, and if you're doing more than two color knitting, it gets a little hairy, literally. <laughs> and it's like a lot, it was, it's a lot to keep everything under control. But I love their colors. I mean, I love the colorways. This, I don't remember the colors. Um, let me see if I have my, my yarns here. Uh, this is the green that I used for um for that and that is that's the wool stock light in the colorway of doesn't say where is the colorway oh yeah it's on here i'm sure i can't see the colorway that's so crazy oh earth ivy this is earth ivy really really pretty pretty green i mean their colorways are gorgeous um, here's the gray that I used on the body. Um, it is, so this is a fingering weight. It's, um, this is called cast iron. It is, um, it's, what are they, it's Highland wool, 100% Highland wool. So it has a little bit of a scratchy feel. However, when you block it, when you wash it, it folds really beautifully and it becomes incredibly soft. 
Um, and some of the other colorways I have over here. Here's the blue. I love this blue. This blue is so pretty. So pretty. I don't normally like pastel-y colors. This one is, but I love this. This is, um, I don't have my glasses. I apologize. This is called Spring Spring Ice. Spring Ice. It's just really beautiful and it just pops when you're doing color work. And then they have, and then I use this really beautiful Celadon Green, which I'm not sure. I used it as the yellow and I'm not sure what that colorway is because I think that that label fell out. Um, and then I use this red. This red is called Red Brick. So gorgeous. Love this red. And I think it just really plays beautifully together. These colors are really beautiful. Um, the pattern is really beautiful. I mean, the color work is so gorgeous. So this is an amazing, I love it. I know I'll be happy with it. I'm going to knit it this time around. I'm going to try to knit it. Um, I, I'm not a fan of really oversized. I love oversized sweaters, but I don't think they are, they look great on me. So, and I wear most of my sweaters with dresses or with high-waisted jeans, or I wear a shirt underneath it that would stick out. So I think I'm going to do this in a more cropped version. I'm, I mean, it's not going to be cropped, but I'm going to have it hit my waist, my natural waist. Um, so if I'm wearing a dress, I can easily wear it with a dress. And if I wear it with a shirt underneath, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be too short on me. Um, but I just, you know, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change that. I'm going to make the sleeves a little narrower. I'm going to size down because I felt the sleeves were just too large on the last sweater that I made. And it gave a very oversized, um, look to the sleeves, which I don't want for this sweater. I really would like them to kind of be fitted and, and true bracelet sleeves. Um, and then the other thing, this is like the major, the major diff, the major thing that I discovered the, the, um, her short row instructions are not correct on the pattern. And this is an updated pattern, um, where she adds increases, but the short rows on the last sweater I made only, and I thought I made a mistake, but I looked back at this time and I had to rewrite the pattern. Um, she only gives instructions to go to the middle and go back. So when you're making a short row, right you have to you start in the middle and then you kind of you extend so you what you're doing with short rows is you're just extending the length right you're 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 lengthening the, the garment um in a particular area so it's nice to have the back be a little higher than the front so that you don't feel that the collar is coming straight up to your neck um and so i always like at least an inch or two maybe an inch and a half of short rows in the back neck of the sweater so before you begin the color work and right after you do the ribbing, you put in the short rows. And her short row just instructions, as I mentioned, they're, they're not really correct. So what you do when you do short rows is you are going, you're starting in the center, you go up, you come back, so you knit up like this to a certain point, you wrap and turn, or you do another short row method, then you turn around, you turn the work, and you purl back. But you're gonna go past the center of the work, because of course then that would just only give you short rows on one side. So you go, which is what her instructions say. And you go past the center marker, and then you go up to the same point on the other side, and then you, uh, and then you knit back, and you're purling back this way, knitting back, so that you end up with these additional, I think it ends up with like an additional six rows when all is said and done. I think I added six rows. So I'm really happy. The last sweater I made did not have that correct uh, thing and it had, and I, and I didn't realize that I should know better as an experienced knitter. I should have known that. Um, but I don't know if you can see, I have like an extra, you know, there's an extra, there's a good inch longer in the back, which I think is going to make the fit better. Um, because I do feel like the other one, I think if, if, it, if it's very oversized, it's not going to make a difference. I really don't. But if you want it to be a little more fitted, it's good to have short rows. So, um, so that's the main, that is my main criticism of the pattern. And I, I've actually thought about contacting the company and just letting them know that. Because if you're an inexperienced knitter, you're going to miss that completely. And you're going to really be disappointed because you won't know until the end that you have like, what's going to happen is you're going to have a pocket of extra fabric fabric on your back, which is really going to ruin things for you. Um, but other than that, that's my main criticism. Um, and that's something you should be aware of if you're going to take this project on. Um, it's a, 
and and the other thing is you're doing three color work knitting which is always uh, it's a challenge not because it's difficult what's difficult is to keep the yarn that you're working with from getting tangled up together and if you're using a yarn like this which is very hairy and kind of like classic you know almost like Shetland wool um, it they stick together so I spent a lot of time um, you know, unwinding, re-rolling re the balls, because you're like switching, you know, you're using different fingers, you have yarn that's crossing like this as you're knitting. And I've seen people who like, they make separate little balls that they can toss around, they kind of like mini, they make mini skeins of each color, which definitely I would recommend doing if you know how to do that. I think that's a great way, because otherwise you're gonna just be fiddling with that. It's just an extra futzy element that you, that's not fun to deal with. So, um, and, and I would have appreciated kind of some sort of explanation about that because I don't, even though I've done lots and lots of color work, this is the first sweater I've done that had three color work in one, in, uh, in one row. So um, those are my two recommendations for this pattern. It's really, really beautiful though. I will say that. I mean, it is so beautiful. It, it's going to be a really gorgeous sweater. I'm going to, I have a dress that I want to wear it with, a black linen dress that I think will be really pretty and I might wear it for Christmas if it's I hope it's finished soon I'm gonna kind of race through this because uh, I just started a new teaching job and um, and that's gonna be you know that's gonna be something that I can do in between my students and I can kind of I have some time to do that so I want to kind of race through that and I'm thinking about making some uh, Christmas gifts this year I think I'll make um, I don't want to, my husband to hear he's 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 here right now but I think I'll make a hat and um, I might do that for my son as well uh, although I'd love to make a pullover for my son I'd love to do something I'm not sure if I've seen a pattern that would I really just want like a simple crew uh, in like a tannish brownish color that he can just throw over you know a collared shirt and I might do that I might I might look at petite knit or um, I'm not sure. I have to look around, spend some time on Ravelry. Um, my next object that I'd love to work on, um, I think I'm gonna do the Everyday Pullover, uh, which is by Pearl Soho in the Linen Quill, which um, I've been following. I like to watch, uh, I watch Caddy Jacks, and they are, they've been talking about it for the longest time. So I, I think I'm gonna jump on that bandwagon, because that's just like a useful, it'll be a simple knit, it's a simple V-neck, um, the drape looks beautiful of that yarn, the yarn, the drape of that yarn looks beautiful, and it looks really like it's, it's universally flattering, and it's, um, and I can wear that with jeans. I can, you can put it over a shirt, you know, a collared shirt. You can put it over a, you know, a t-shirt. You can put it over a dress. It just looks like a really useful, useful garment to have. So I will definitely love to have that in my collection. And then I'm looking at, um, Mandarin on YouTube. I follow her and I think I'm going to do something with Plotilope. She has the tulip sweater, which looks so pretty and looks really simple. So I'm looking, after I finish this really kind of complicated Birkin pattern, I'm gonna move on to some, some simple knitting. I'm gonna do some simple knitting of some plain. I might do a petite knits. Uh, she does a really pretty, um, really simple turtleneck. And that's it. I think I'm just gonna do three more sweaters. That will be enough to keep me, uh, keep me going through the winter. And then I'll have three beautiful sweaters to wear. So, um, so that's that. That's that's what I've got for today. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're knitting something really fun. And just one more look at my unfinished Birkin. So excited for this to be off the needles. And I will show you, I will share with you when it is finished. Have an amazing one. Bye-bye.